Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Modded. We're going to be fighting and indeed hopefully defending this village from La Sand. He's attempting to do some damage to our economy right here, but we will not allow him to do such a thing. That would not be very nice of him. All right, so yes, me pressing the wrong button because again, using a very unfamiliar keyboard to myself. Okay, so let's have a look here. Let's see if I can go for a little nice uh, auto-delegate. I'm not really going to be worried. Oh, wow. Okay. That... <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, maybe I'll be worried. Maybe I'll be worried. Let's just do a little bit of uh, a little bit of shooting with my crossbow right here. Pretty sure I can hit a couple of blind shots without too many difficulties. And hopefully that's going to get me some nice kills. And uh, maybe a little bit of skill here and there as well. That could be quite nice. Uh, it, here we go. Oh, nice couch lance right there. They were not expecting that amount of damage to come around the corner. That is for sure. Let's take out that guy's horse as well. Anytime I can sort of wade into the uh, opponent's ranged units, I think that's pretty good. Anytime we can do that, it's disrupting them. It's making them panic a little bit and maybe reducing their morale as well because I feel like anytime the archers get a little bit, hmm, should we say, interfered with or harassed a little bit they're going to be uh well they're going to be worried about that they're going to be worried about that and they're hopefully then going to make mistakes run away and all that sort of thing but of course they are just ai so maybe we cannot count on them to panic just like a human would but well, let's hope let's hope eh but i'm pretty sure that that is going to be a victory for us this basically was just on my way because i actually had another goal in mind when I started this episode which was actually to head over to the nearby siege and see if I could maybe lend a hand but there you go we've actually increased our relation with the leader of this particular village which I quite like uh, I don't think that's too bad even though I'm not really going to be utilizing the relation at all I mean to be fair there's really nothing here for me in uh, the best of times so yeah i'm just gonna let this guy go as i've said before i'm gonna be trying to mend fences as much as i can because of my previous transgressions with all of my executing that i did <laughs> i say all of my executing but i only did two yes i only executed two people but that is enough you know that is enough to cause some problems anyway there's 112 defenders at wallaham castle right here and i'm uh hmm i think we should be all right I, th I feel like we should be okay to maybe... It, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me actually just take a quick look at the composition. He has 155 serfs and 54 levy infantry. Okay. You think we can do this? Do you think with this army, you think I can go in there and actually do some damage? I think it is... I think it's quite likely, actually. But I don't know whether we're going to... Uh, this is this is very this is very dicey oh uh, there's Mirko coming in here I don't know whether I want you know what let's do it ah mm. uh, now I'm now I'm you know what does he have anything <laughs> Uh, oh, he does. He actually owns this. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, can I... <sighs> Why can I not trade with this guy? Why can I not barter with him right now? It's pretty clear that I can't. Okay, well, there's uh, there's an army coming in. If the combat strength wasn't so dramatically in their favor, I would have been, you know, really up for that fight. But unfortunately... It was very much in their favor. I mean, as you can see, even with the addition of 500 units, it's just just about over the halfway line. Kind of surprised about that, to be honest, but oh well, never mind. Okay, so this is where we're actually going to be a bit, a bit cautious, because I'm not going to put them in auto-delegate, but bear in mind that we don't really have a huge amount of tactical options here. Basically, just my infantry are the majority of my forces. And that's it can't really do much with them can i but let's have a look and see where the enemy is actually going to be oh they, they're all all the way over here bear in mind they do have an overwhelming number of serfs which of course is going to make a huge difference in the amount of well effectiveness that they have in this fight 
even though they were able to actually deal some damage to me already, which is kind of unfortunate. Nice damage. Yes. I'm. Can, can I get 300 in crossbows? You think I can get 300 in crossbows? I think I might be able to. If I can continue getting headshots and things like that, that's going to be really nice. So they're going into the tree line here, which is obviously going to make them have a pretty great advantage against any cavalry that, you know, we send in here. So that's obviously going to be a bit of a problem. But we do have to be a bit aware of the fact that most of their cavalry themselves are very low tier. You can see that quite easily here. Rodox scouts and the like, and they're really not going to be able to do too much to us. He says as he almost gets himself killed. Yes, did you see that? I feel like I feel like that guy probably could have taken us out if he had just had a little bit of extra luck on his side. But at the moment, you know what? We're going to go for a little bit of an auto-delegate here. I know I said I wouldn't do that, but my forces are already all the way over here. These are my allies, of course. And uh, we do have to bear in mind, however, that my own army is all maximum level. So there really is no point in me sending in my forces for experience gain at all. The only thing that I'm really concerned with at this point is map control and uh, generally being able to eliminate as many vassals as possible. That's pretty much all I am concerned with at this point in the game. If I had an army that was um, very much significantly needing to level up, then this would be a perfect battle for it. And now I'm kind of kicking myself for not going back to my nearby town, although it is a very, well, I'm going to say a fair distance away. And it probably would have been over by the time we got back. So that's obviously something to bear in mind, but still. That's the kind of thing that you've got to think about. If you're having a fief nearby, and that fief has a particularly large number of low tier units, you might consider in one of these moments to just bring them along. Bring them along in these kinds of situations and just chuck them in the fire and see what happens, because you never know when you're going to get a couple of diamonds out of it. And uh, it's amusing because we're carbon based. Yes, there we go. But uh, otherwise, the fact is, oh, nice, look at that, two charge damage, great. But yes, anyway, as I say, basically my entire goal right now, from now on, pretty much, is to gain as much land and territory and control against the enemy factions as possible. There is pretty much nothing else that I can really benefit from as long as my army at the moment stays intact. But of course, that very much relies on me making relatively good decisions and by decisions I'm talking about things like which army do we go up against which enemy do we decide to take on and so on because well if you think of it this way you know I was thinking of fighting against 450 units for the most part and I think we probably would have um I don't know I think we would have done okay but I think it probably would have ended in a defeat. Maybe we would have eliminated about 300 units or something like that. But the remaining 150 would have probably been able to eliminate us. And that would have been a huge shame because then all of my tier 6, tier 5 units, I don't even know whether I have any tier 6, but I think I have a couple. They would have all been eliminated. And all of my hard work of leveling them up and everything would have been for nothing, basically, which would have been an absolute travesty. But, you know... Sometimes these things happen and maybe it would be a good idea to maybe take a chance like that a little bit later on down the line when we actually have the ability to, well, come back from such a grievous loss relatively fast. And I'm talking about having a, another set of units that are capable of replacing the ones that you lose in that army and uh, then continuing the fight. 
because I have no idea what kind of units I have in my garrison right now. Pretty sure mostly tier 4s, but that's it. Don't have anything else. I, uh, I would need to search around a little bit more. I'm not even entirely sure if I have any other fiefs at this point as well. I, th I think I might need to take a look at that and see what's going on because I might very well have more fiefs than I think because sometimes when I'm off screen, I don't really take part too much in the votes like in, in fief fief voting and uh you know making sure that i actually get land and things like that because generally the ai tends to ignore me unless i take the fief myself so that's the reason for that but yeah i'm kind of in interested now to see whether they have given me something but let me actually just go zoom zoom got to be a bit careful here there we go just gonna let these guys deal with the remaining units hopefully i'm not gonna get murdered oh where are they running off to are you serious why are you running over this way guys it is hilarious what the ai decides to do when you speed things up because they're they're literally running around right now let, let, can i actually see ah yeah look you, you can see at the top of the screen how fast this actually makes the game run now it literally makes it run at what what is that 0 0.1 like, I don't even know, like, one second for every 0 0.1 seconds that, that passes, it's just like, going extremely fast. And Adelintis has actually been eliminated, so I'm not entirely sure, is she from a, uh, yep, she is from the opposing army, which is fantastic. These are the reasons why I like to go in and fight these battles. We lost a grand total of one unit ourselves as well, which is absolutely fantastic. That really is a very, very nice uh, ratio right there. Uh, I'm gonna let this guy go. Um, I'm basically gonna let everyone go, I'm pretty sure. Everyone that I can let go, at least. What do I want to do about the prisoners? I'll take some prisoners just for the sake of selling them, because we obviously have the ability to do so quite easily. We have full control over this war, and I don't think we really have anything to worry about in terms of enemy units coming out of nowhere and attempting to attack me. So I can pretty much just leisurely walk, or should we say stroll, all the way back to Kuyaz and then sell all my prisoners in the tavern there. And the reason why I'm doing that is because of the roguery skill. I'm actually kind of close to getting, I think, what is it, 50? Let me take a look. Yes, I'm relatively close to getting 50 in roguery. And I actually have one attribute point and one focus point to spend. I should probably spec... Hmm, you should probably expect this in charm, right? Even though one influence point per day really makes no, no difference whatsoever, right? Well, what about leadership? Every, each tier 6 troop increases battle morale by 1 up to 10 at the start of battle, plus 1 companion. That really makes no difference whatsoever. And also, every skill increase after 250 gives you plus 1 party size. That also doesn't make that much of a difference. So I'm thinking, is there anything else that I want to go for? Well, yes, engineering I would love to go for. But you can see here that engineering is extremely difficult to level up. Not entirely sure why, but apparently it is. Wow, these are actually kind of crazy. Look at that. Your troops deal 5% increased damage with crossbows, increased hit chance to siege engines by 10% during a campaign siege. And then the other one, which is, which is actually just as good, damage to walls increased by 25% during a siege. That's insane if you want to take down the walls. And your troops deal 10% more damage to shields. There's a huge amount of stuff here that you would probably want to go for but i'm kind of worried about it to be honest i'm thinking maybe roguery might even be the way to go hmm but why that's the point you're probably asking yourself well why would you take this there's no real reason for me to take this right well yeah that's actually true that's why i'm having a look at it and seeing whether there's actually anything that could be useful it seems like there really isn't anything though unfortunately so it seems like we're going to have to take something different. So I'm thinking right now, engineering seems like the most useful. So I'm probably going to take that and we'll put another point in cunning because basically I want to level up roguery to 50 at least. And it's going to give us uh, a couple more experience points to be able to earn that. Obviously, engineering and roguery tactics obviously is going to be a little bit more as well. But generally, tactics is um, for some reason kind of a bit finicky i'm not entirely sure why it's taking so long to level up as well especially at the very start of the series obviously i had nothing in cunning and no focus points in this but 
generally tactics doesn't seem to level up for me that easily as it has in in past versions of the game i'm not entirely sure why that's happening but anyway oh we're declaring war on batania oh okay well that's actually kind of strange not entirely sure why they do that but there you go there's another three points in roguery pretty nice to see that and otherwise let's go over to the looting screen and sell a bunch of stuff Kuyas usually has a pretty decent amount of money in the marketplace here. So let's just get all this stuff out of the way. Can I sell all of it? I don't think I can. Can I sell all of it? Yeah. Oh, yes, I can, actually. That's really, really nice. Okay, good. And I'm still, you know, I am still on the lookout for a good crossbow. So let's see. Is there actually a good crossbow here? Highly unlikely. Yeah. Look at that harpoon. Are you serious? 282,000 for this harpoon? That is actually a bit, um, <laughs> uh, a bit insane. Okay, yeah, well, anyway, we're, um, we're apparently fighting against Batania soon, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to go back to Liberatus real quick. We should probably take a look at my encyclopedia entry as well, because you never know if I have anything else under my control. Oh, it doesn't show me? I'm going to have to go to the battle club. Ah, I have... Oh, I, yes, I have Ascar, don't I? Oh, I had no idea. Right. Okay, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Like, it, like no one's business. That was actually kind of bad. Okay, these guys are all saying yes, so I'm going to just, you know, vote for 100 there to increase my charm skill a little bit more, even though that really makes no difference. And we are being very shrewd about our war declarations. I don't know whether you've noticed this, but this faction that I'm a part of right now is being very sneaky. You know, they're, they're like, oh, we're going to declare war against these guys because they're weaker than us. As you can quite clearly tell, they are basically half our faction strength. And uh, that's kind of crazy. Usually the AI is not that smart when it comes to declaring war usually they're just going to be like oh those guys yeah they're really strong oh let's try to defeat them and then end up getting their butts kicked like no one's business so yeah that is the kind of thing that we don't really want to have happen anyway let's go into the garrison here what do we have available yeah as you can see these guys are really not very good yeah uh is there anything i can do about that training yeah, as you can see, the max upgrade tier is four. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, I guess they're just going to continue leveling them up then. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be doing a very good job at the moment. So Liberatus is going to have to be the place that I'll draw some of my reinforcements from. And then just hope that that works out quite nicely. Oh, I should have taken a look at the uh, improvements at Ascar, shouldn't I? Hmm. That probably would have made a bit of a difference. Hmm. Oh, well, never mind. I suppose we'll have to do that at a later point. But uh, Liberatus is definitely something that I want to try and manage here. As you can see, we have nothing in the reserves. So I'm going to try and do that because we want to continue improving it as fast as possible. So you can see I have every single project queued up at the moment. And our fortifications, or actually training fields, are about to be done in six days. So that's looking quite nice too. Let's open the garrison here. So what do we have here? Yeah, this is a lot better. As you can see, we have a bunch of fully leveled tier fours we've got some tier threes and various other things here as well so i'm thinking now that we have 195 total company capacity i'm going to take a whole bunch of ranged units so now i have 180 uh let's take a couple of tier fives for some reason i have some tier fives I'm not entirely sure why that is and i guess we'll take a couple of melee as well Sounds sounds good, I guess. Sounds good, yeah. Okay. These guys are obviously going to be leveling up quite fast, or at least I can hope so. Yeah, so Batania is quite far away. As you can see, they've already started a siege at Thraktorai Castle, and that's pretty good. So let's make our way over there. We are going to be much slower than we were beforehand, because I obviously have many, many more uh, people. Oh, we've already... T what? We took a town? Wow, that guy really doesn't, uh, he doesn't waste any time, does he? No, he doesn't waste any time at all. Uh, 
All right, so it looks like this guy is the fellow that I will be voting for, mainly because I don't have full relation with him. And we have full relation with everyone else. Well, it's basically like a juggling game now because they all have 100 relation, basically. It seems like our faction is having a slight bit of a problem. Oh, hello there. Wow, I had no idea that there was actually someone there until they were right on top of me. That is pretty bad. I was traveling at night. Okay, yeah, so these guys, what do they have? Well, you can quite clearly tell that they have some pretty low tier units, but they are once again in possession of 456 units. So it's highly unlikely I'm going to be able to do anything here. We are going to be making peace with the Royalist of Landians in just a second as well, but I'm going to wait around here for some of our armies to appear, and then we're going to do some battle alongside them once again. Oh my goodness, look at how much they are being ganged up on here. This is insanity. Okay, so yeah, we've made peace with these guys. Did we get a good peace agreement with them? No, we got nothing. <sighs> I don't know why they do that. They should really, you know, do a little bit of negotiating before they sign the peace declaration. It's going to help the faction overall to get us, you know, a thousand dinars per day or something like that. We don't really need to go for anything too amazing, but we do need to go for something at least. Because otherwise it's just a huge waste of value. We need to make the most of these kinds of situations, but oh well, never mind. The AI is not going to do things perfectly every single time. And they are going to be making mistakes, just like any person would, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, they have shown themselves to be a little bit careless when it comes to those peace agreements a few times now, which is rather unfortunate. Ah, yes, lovely. Thank you, wonderful tree. Okay, so basically we are seeing two groups of cavalry. One in this small little forest here. We're having a couple of our own cavalry trying to creep up on them. That is really, a, uh, it's not a very good idea to be honest. I mean, to be fair, you know, those guys are literally just going to absolutely murder anyone because they outnumber us. But these guys do seem to have some very strange weaponry in their hands. Most of the time they're running around with, well, if they don't have a polearm, they have a very short reach axe or some other kind of sword, which is not really going to do that much. In comparison to having a polearm, of course. And if our infantry... No, we lost someone! Oh, we lost the leader of the other army that has just joined this fight. Wow. That was incredibly quick. He got taken out by one of the Batanian Fian champions, I believe, which are, of course, as we know, the highest tier of ranged unit that the Batanians have available to them. And I'm not surprised that he was assassinated by one of these. Okay, let's see where the enemy are. Okay, so they're up there. The cavalry is doing a little bit of hit and run attacks, not really being that effective.
And there's one of the enemy leaders as well. We were able to take him out. That's fantastic. If only we could do more of that. That would be nice. But generally, I am uh, pretty unlucky with finding those guys. I think you're going to have to be... Um, you know, on the ball a little bit more than I am to spot the uh, weapons and armor that they're using. Because generally they are going to be a little bit more unique than most of the enemy forces. But most of the time I will usually get the leaders mixed up with one of the higher tier cavalry. So that's the reason why I've generally stopped trying to identify the enemy leader. Even though it is an absolutely fantastic strategy to have. Oh, hello. Oh, see? Now, exactly. That's the same kind of thing that I'm talking about. That guy looked 100% like one of the lords, but no, he was not. He was just one of the lancers. So yeah, that is definitely one of those things where you think, oh, that's definitely one of them, but no, it's not. Well, that was a little bit risky, but, well, you don't get the uh, reward if you don't risk some stuff, I suppose. Anyway, it seems like my forces are being a little bit too cautious here. I'm not entirely sure why they're all waiting back here, but I can only assume it is because they are being harassed by one cavalry, or a very small smattering of cavalry, that is. As you can see, they are now starting to eliminate some of these Batanian lowland riders, and uh, those are the main forces that are causing them to hang back here. There's a story that I have told before about my adventures in Prophecy of Pendor, which is a warband mod. And obviously, if you don't know anything about the Mountain Blade franchise, then you may not know about Warband. But generally, Warband is known as the most classic and uh, probably one of the best, if not the best, of the Mountain Blade franchise, dependent on, you know, what you prefer, of course. But generally, Prophecy of Pandora is a mod in that game. It is a total conversion, meaning it changes everything about it. It changes the units, it changes the factions, and it changes the map. But the story goes something like this. I go and I try to, uh, try to do a little bit of an attack on these guys. It's a unique spawn in Prophecy of Pendor. There are these very strong armies that roam around the land, and if you're able to defeat them, they give you an almighty powerful reward in the form of a Qualys gem. And these Qualys gems can be used to do all kinds of things, like create your own knighthood order, and uh, trade them with these, you know, these elves for, you know, special equipment and other amazing things. Now, obviously, I very badly wanted to destroy one of these unique spawns, and this particular enemy was one of the easier ones but still it would require every little bit of well determination gusto whatever you want to call it to be able to succeed however my forces did that thing that, that my AI just did just now which was the enemy sent a, uh, a, a very small contingent of cavalry and I'm talking about maybe, I don't know, five, maybe 10, maybe 15 units 
to harass my back line. And then what happened was the entirety of my infantry, or let's just say 75%, maybe 80% of my infantry, were running around on foot in the slowest manner possible after these random cavalry and the huge bulk of the enemy's forces. You know what they were doing? They were ripping, ripping apart my, uh, the rest of my army. So you can kind of assume that uh, that battle didn't go too well, but rest assured I got my revenge later on in that series. But the point is, that's exactly what happened here. My forces were very dubious about moving forward. They were not really knowing what they should be doing, and they got a bit confused as to where they should be at that time. So obviously that made things very complicated indeed and it made things uh, get a little bit too drawn out a little bit a little bit more than you would have liked of course so anyway we're going to do the same thing here where we basically just check out what these guys have and whether they're the leader or not and then we'll just let them go generally i want to try and let as many people go as possible because having that additional relation is going to make a difference in the end at least I can hope so. Let's try and cross our fingers for that. And obviously I'm trying to earn enough money. I'm trying to get a decent amount of cash to be able to, uh, you know, trade and swap these various fiefs around and everything. And we can even do something a little bit, a little bit sneaky as well, where we can pretty much do this thing where if I have a fief and I want to trade it, then what I'll do is I'll take all the units that I have from that particular place garrison, take them all out of there, put them in my other garrison, or take them somewhere else, give them to an army of a party or whatever, and then leave it completely undefended, trade that town over to the opponent somehow for one of their own towns or something like that, and then go and siege the town that I just swapped. And obviously, it's going to have zero defenders at that point. Or it should, in theory, have zero defenders. Obviously, that is just a theory at the moment, because I haven't done that in quite some time, and it might not work any further, or it might not have worked at all. But it is definitely something that I might like to try in the near future. Anyway, that is it for this episode. We have now declared war against Britannia. As you can see, they're not doing very well, because they seem to be... Uh, getting destroyed by the um, these guys, the Vegias, by the looks of things. Yes, they seem to be getting destroyed by them. So we'll see what happens with that. And, um, oh, look at this. The Palatians have apparently started to expand over into Sturgeon territory up in the north as well. So that's kind of interesting. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.